How many of you are getting less sleep now than you usually do throughout the year? That should be everybody. How do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that? And this is what I want us to just talk about for a moment, inshallah ta'ala. This idea of exhaustion for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be tired for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a famous hadith from the Prophet sallallahu that Prophet sallallahu said, the believer is not struck with any form of fatigue, any form of distress, any form of hardship, not even the prick of a thorn, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expiates some of his sins by that, should he be seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. Nasab is the first part of that. It's fatigue. It's being tired. Now there's something to speak about here when it talks about being tired. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never taught us to seek tiredness for the sake of seeking tiredness, or seek is exhaustion for the sake of being exhausted. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not given a choice between two things, except for what? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took the easier one of the two routes. If there were two equal things in front of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he always chose the easier route, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. He told his companions not to sit out in the hot sun if they have shade. He taught his companions and he taught his wife, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha Zainab, when she had the rope in the masjid to hold herself up when she would get tired, that once a person reaches that point, where they no longer know what they're saying anymore, at that point, you should go to sleep. So the Prophet ﷺ was not one who taught us to self-destruct, to hurt ourselves, but there's a natural element of a tab, of, of, of hardship, fatigue, that comes with worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in these seasons. And there's a visual in Arafah that I always think about, may Allah Azza wa allow us to return to Arafah. Everyone say, Ameen and have an accepted hajj. When Allah is boasting to the angels and he says, look at these ibad, look at them. And Allah says, Ghubra, they're covered in dust. They're tired, they're disheveled. What are they seeking? They're seeking Allah's mercy. Bear witness, O angels, I've forgiven them all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks out at the people and sees them tired. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim and I want you to think about this hadith. It's actually the end of one of the Arba'in al-Nawi. It's actually one of my favorite hadith. In Arba'in al-Nawi, it's the end of it. In this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every morning you wake up selling your soul. Every day you wake up in the morning and your capital, what you put on sale, is your soul. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you either free your soul or you destroy it. Think about that idea here, that you wake up in the morning and your soul is your commodity. You're either going to sell it to this dunya or you're going to sell it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to sell it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a means by which you liberate it. To sell it to this dunya is a means by which you destroy it. You cause it to perish. Meaning what? What exhausts you? What gives you concern? What are you thinking about at night when you, put your, when you put your head to your pillow? What's consuming your thoughts at that point? What is it that causes you to ache? What is it that causes your heart to beat a little bit faster? What are you losing sleep over? As much as that can be Allah, then that's better. Now, it is unreasonable and there's a reason why we don't do this throughout the year. It's unreasonable to be in last 10 nights mode throughout the year. Just like it's unreasonable to fast every day of the year. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited it, right? This is not a reasonable daily schedule. But the spirit and the proportion of it should carry on after Ramadan in the same way that the other elements of Ramadan do carry over. How are you tiring yourself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How are you exhausting yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are you putting yourself through for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not an unnecessary incurring of hardship upon yourself, but there are those that sell their selves for the pursuit of Allah's pleasure and for the pursuit of Allah's mercy. And so I want you inshallah ta'ala as you feel that sense of tiredness, you know it's, it's interesting because in the last 10 nights you're looking for that deeply spiritual moment. You're looking for that moment that you feel a deep connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you make that dua and you force a tear maybe and all of that is good all of that is wonderful but it might be that the moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at you and has the most mercy on you 
is when you are in your weakest and most vulnerable point, vulnerable point and it's 4 a.m., and you're trying to walk and keep your eyes open for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that might be the moment that Allah looks at you and forgives you and grants you Laylatul Qadr. That moment that you're at your most exhausted. Because Allah accounts for that fatigue. Allah accounts for that exhaustion. Everyone wakes up in the morning selling their soul for something. Either they liberate their soul by that or they destroy their soul by that. If I was to ask you to describe the feeling of sitting in a place where the book of Allah is being recited, the Quran is being recited, even if you don't understand every word that is being recited, and people are gathered and they are all focused on listening to an explanation of the book of Allah or an explanation of a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, and it's 1 or 2 a.m. in the masjid in Ramadan, and there is a stillness that overcomes everyone. There is a complete stillness. I want you for a moment to first appreciate how incredible and how beautiful that is and how that cannot be found anywhere but in these masajid in these last 10 nights of Ramadan when people are gathered together and it's one of those things that you have to experience it to be able to understand it and it's also unlike any other religious experience that you will find conveyed through any other philosophy. You know, many times when you talk about the feeling of heightened religiosity, it's supposed to reflect in an out-of-body experience of sorts. Something's supposed to happen to you to where you start shaking and you feel something happening to you that's different, that actually drives you to a heightened, almost unnatural emotion. But when you're sitting in a masjid, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan or hearing Allah being remembered, there's a stillness. It's all around us. And I want to capture that subhanAllah because it's such a unique and profound and powerful concept and it comes from a hadith of the Prophet wasallam that we feel so much in Ramadan that no group of people sit together to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one narration or reciting the book of Allah or studying the book of Allah together. No group of people sit together to remember Allah, to read his book or to listen to his book being recited or to study his book except that the angels surround them. And when the angels surround them, what happens? The Prophet ﷺ said, Rahma, mercy descends upon them. You're sitting and the angels start to surround you. You can't see them, but you know that their wings are surrounding you from here all the way up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is present especially on the day of Jum'ah. And Rahma, mercy descends upon them. What is that speaking about? That is speaking about the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is nothing but forgiveness. How many people are forgiven on Laylatul Qadr? How many people are forgiven in the month of Ramadan? How much mercy is descending upon us in the month of Ramadan? And one of the things that allows for mercy to, to descend upon us is the lack of the barrier of sin. So people are naturally in their best state. And so Rahmah is descending upon them and the angels are capturing that and they're bringing down those declarations of forgiveness, those declarations of mercy as they are descending upon us. But there's one part of this where it speaks to an internal reality. So you have the angels surrounding with their wings and then the mercy and the forgiveness descending upon you and then tranquility, peace descends into their hearts. So the internal reality is that something soaks inside of you that is referred to as a sakina, stillness, tranquility, peace. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions you to those that are with him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people. God boasts about you to his highest angels and says, look at this person sitting in a masjid at 1 a.m., at 2 a.m., at 3 a.m., standing up and praying and remembering me and as you are soaking in something something's happening inside of you you're feeling something inside of you Allah is talking about you in a gathering that you one day hope to physically be present in as well may Allah make us amongst those who sell ourselves for his pleasure who pursue his pleasure with everything that we have and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the halal risk our jobs that we go about doing throughout the day. The things that we do that are otherwise mundane. The idle things that we do that we do just because we live. May Allah make all of that fi sabilihi. All of that in His cause because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards everything 
that is permissible when it's done seeking his pleasure as an act of worship as well. So may Allah count our sleep, may Allah count our eating, may Allah count our worldly duties also as forms of worship. And may Allah allow our greatest concern to always be his pleasure and the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sakina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tranquility. May Allah grant us his forgiveness. May Allah grant us his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his highest mention. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those that are included in the front rows of Al Jannah and in the highest places of Al Firdaus Ta'ala. Allahumma inna ka afu wa tuhib al afwa. Fa'afu anni. Allahumma inna ka afu wa tuhib al afwa. Fa'afu anni. Allahumma inna ka afu wa tuhib al afwa. Fa'afu anni. Allahumma inna ka afu wa kareem wa tuhib al afwa. Fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are forgiving, you are generous, you love to forgive, so forgive me. May Allah not make us amongst the deprived. May Allah not make us amongst the negligent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those who are fully forgiven on that night and forbidden from the fire. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.